Welcome to the Manifestation Bay podcast. My name is Katherine Zinkina, and I'm a manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. If you're looking to massively up-level your life, your finances, your relationships, your productivity and success, then you have come to the right place. My goal in this podcast is to help you see the infinite potential within yourself to be, do, and have anything that your heart desires. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of mindset development to help you maximize who you are and where you're going. Leave it to me to provide you with the tools, the resources, the strategies, and teachings that you need to manifest a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. I know we're about to have so much fun together, so thank you so much for pushing play today, and now let's begin. Hello, my beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Bay podcast, live from my car. (laughs) I'm back in my unofficial podcast office, my white G-Wagon that is parked right in front of my house that I'm using to escape from my husband who's currently on a meeting and my son who is currently, we're at that time of the day, we're in that moment where we need to pull Miss Rachel out just so mom and dad can accomplish a couple of tasks. And I want to get this episode recorded before I put my son to bed. I don't like to do late night recordings because then I'm like tired and I don't want to give you a tired version of myself. Okay. So G-Wagon episode it is. So let's talk about vision boards. So I wanted to share my four vision board hacks that you haven't heard of yet. And I'm excited to record this episode because this is in celebration of me launching a vision board training that I'm super excited to put out there because even though I've done vision board trainings before in the past, way, way, way long ago, I've obviously learned a lot. I've really updated and upgraded my process and I'm excited to make it super in depth and put it out there in the world so that you can both learn my manifestation process, my actual step-by-step manifestation process, which I'll talk about in the next podcast episode. But if you want to get the in-depth version as well as examples and how to create a vision board that is literally in alignment with this process, um, then this is where um, you'll get some more information on that. So why vision board? Well, I'm excited to talk about vision boards because I have been building vision boards since I turned 16 years old. And why 16? That's because that's when I discovered the law of attraction. I discovered the law of attraction. If you don't know my story from the book, The Secret, my best friend at the time literally handed me this book, popped it out of nowhere. I don't know where she got it. And she said, this is how my grandpa has everything that he wants in life. And this is how he money works for him. He doesn't work for money. And I don't, I don't care how old you are, who you are, of course, that will make anyone be like, okay, I need this book. I don't know what the secret is, but I want to know what the secret is. And so ever since then, I read it from cover to cover. I learned a little bit about vision boards and I'll never forget. I had this cork board in my room at my parents' house. And that was my vision board. And I was obsessed with it. And in fact, the car that is parked next to mine right now, because my car is a G-Wagon, my husband's is right next to me. It's the Audi R8 that I actually had on my very first vision board. And we have had this car now for the last five years. So 2018 is when I got this car. And it still trips me out because this is one of those things that I put on my very first vision board that of many things on my first vision board, it's like, I'm literally living that life right now. You know, it's so wild. And over the years, I've learned how to use vision boards to literally 3D print my desires into my real life. And the reason why I love vision boards is because they are powerful and potent representations of your dream life in visual form that can aid with visualization, 
of the life that you want to create. And what's really cool is that over the years, I've learned to go beyond the visual because I've learned that not everybody is visual. So not everyone resonates with vision boards because much to my surprise over the years of becoming a manifestation teacher as someone who is incredibly visual and is really good at visualizing, I learned that other people aren't. There's a lot of people who are auditory or kinesthetic or, you know, they don't, they just don't see pictures. And even if they do have pictures on a vision board, which does help them visualize because it's like, oh, I know what to look at. I know what to see in my head. There's still so many elements where we can take this so many steps further. So the most powerful vision boards are the ones that convince your mind that these images aren't just representation of something that you will one day create in the future, but that it's actually happening right now. So that's where these subconscious mind tricks and hacks that I will actually share a couple with you today that you can use to upgrade and uplevel your vision board and literally show your mind that this isn't just something that will one day happen. This is not just a random compilation of images or words or whatever it is, but this is something that's being experienced right now as we speak because time is just an illusion. All timelines are happening at once. There's a version of you who right now is actually experiencing the vision board life. So whatever your vision board right now is, there's a version of you out there who is already living that. You just need to timeline jump. You just need to shift your frequency so that you can live that life now and you will. Like reality will sort itself out. It will rearrange itself so that you are a an exact match to your vision board life. And that's where I like to call it 3D printing because you go from like, oh, that's cool. It's this 2D, you know, compilation of photos to like, holy crap, I can see it. I can touch it. I can smell it. I can drive it. I can feel it. Like it's already here. This is so cool. So over the years, gaining the information that I now have about how the mind works and how exactly it works with the quantum field to manifest your desires, I've perfected the ideal vision board process to help you manifest what you want. And this process I'll be sharing more about in today's episode, as well as the next episode that I'm uploading. I'm pretty sure it's going to come out on Thursday if everything aligns timeline speaking wise perfectly. And as well as super in depth in my masterclass training that I actually launched today, right now, as we speak, that you can get your hands on while you listen to this episode. So I put it in the show notes. Um, It's called Vision Board Alchemy. You can just go ahead and click it right there and sign up just as I'm like, as you're listening to this episode. Or you can go to manifestationbabe.com slash vision board. Again, that's manifestationbabe.com slash vision board. And all the deets for it are there. So here's the problem with outdated vision board tutorials. There's a lot of vision board tutorials out there. There's a lot of blogs and articles and YouTube videos, even like my old stuff that I've put out there, which is now considered outdated to me. Basically, what's going on is you're just grabbing a bunch of random pictures off of Pinterest, right? You're slapping them together or or not Pinterest. It could be from a magazine. It could be from Google. It can be from anywhere. You're, you're like, ooh, I want this car. So let me quickly Google it. Okay, great. Let me grab that picture. Let me slap it together. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Call it a day, right? There's not as much prep work that goes into it, which I've realized makes or breaks a vision board, especially with the one that I made most recently. I'm like, holy shit, this is it. (laughs) This is it. And there's also, you know, very few people talk about the principles that involve the subconscious mind and how the subconscious mind manifests, you know, in alignment with the quantum field that is best to be integrated into the vision board building. You want to build a vision board that is in alignment with the subconscious mind, not just something random. Even if you're like, oh, but yes, this is what I desire. This is what I want to manifest. Yes, but there are strategic things that you could do so that you could literally convince your mind that this is already here. This is already done. And like I said, sure, 
any vision board could work, but it might take a long time, right? If you don't align it properly, it could take a long time. And I don't know about you, but I don't really just want to sit around here and wait and hope for these random pictures come to life. Like I want to live this life. I'm too busy. I don't have enough time to sit around and wait. Like I want to live it now. Um, And the biggest thing that I've already mentioned, which is they don't take into consideration that that not everyone is a visual, visual manifester. Many people struggle to visualize and they need to bring more than just visual elements into their boards. There's also auditory kinesthetic elements, which can be integrated, which I'll share with you a little bit in this podcast episode, um, as well as in depth in the vision board alchemy training. And another thing that I found very interesting um, in the vision board building process is that you can take into consideration, which most trainings don't, human design which you're, if you're not familiar with human design, it's a very powerful resource for anyone who's interested in understanding and knowing how they're designed to best operate in this specific lifetime and have a really good idea and insight into the relationship that you have on an individual level with the universe and how you're specifically meant to manifest. And I truly believe, and human design would agree with me, that everyone is designed to be successful. Like, Everybody living their life in alignment with who they actually are and who they came here to be is designed to be successful. It's if you're not experiencing success right now, it's because you are trying to be or you're doing something that is not in alignment with who you truly are. You're trying to mold yourself to be liked by someone, to be accepted by someone, to be seen as not too much or Uh, not too big or not too out there. Like you're molding yourself in a way that just isn't who you are. And if you just go out there and you are, you, you play life full out being boldly you, you are absolutely destined, designed to be successful. Your success is fucking inevitable. So human design would agree with me. And it literally shows you in many different elements of how you are meant to make decisions, how you're meant to um, use your intuition, how you are meant to manifest. Like there's so many elements that go into it. I am not a human design expert, but I follow a lot of human design experts. I have friends who are human design experts. I know a good amount of it in general. And I know what is most important to manifestation. That's what I know for sure. And so that is what I teach inside my Manifestation Babe Academy program. Um, And that's also what I'm sprinkling as well into this podcast, as well as the vision board alchemy training. So there's something called specific versus non-specific manifester, which can be found in one of your four arrows. Um, If you've ever seen your chart, you know what I'm talking about. And that comes into play in your vision board. There's also something called cognition, which is how you connect and how you connect with and digest your desires. So it has a lot to do with food and your environment, but of course your desires can also be digested. Your desires are also to be connected with. Um, that's how you know that you really want something is because you feel really connected to it. So you can use this, which I'll talk a little bit about, um, and especially inside the training, that you can implement into your vision board that makes it literally tailor-made to how you manifest uniquely. So knowing what I know about vision boards today and upgrading my process many times over, I want to share with you four hacks that you haven't heard of that will immediately take your vision board to the next level. So if you have a current vision board, just integrate these hacks. And some of them can be integrated just even outside the vision board, but in, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, it can complement your vision board and take everything to the next level, okay? So here are the hacks. Number one, I love this one. This one works too well for me. Like the moment that I implemented this one, it's like, bam, 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 bam. It just shit just 3D printed in front of my eyes. I, I don't know. Like my, <laughs> I joke that the, the mind is the 3D printer, right? But we don't always see it printing. We don't really see it until it appears in front of us. And yes, we can track synchronicities and we can see the evidence and find the evidence and feel it and all these things. But 
holy crap, it's still such an amazing process. Like it still blows me away. And I've been doing this for such a long time. So the first hack, always put something on your vision board that's already manifested before. It can be anything, but preferably something that you once really wanted and it means a lot to you. So for example, if you have always wanted your car, the car that you drive right now, you've always wanted it. It was once a manifestation to be had, to be 3D printed, to be desired, to be manifested. Put that on your vision board. Um, My last one, what did I use? I'm pretty sure I used the there's a bag. I love purses. I don't know about you, but I love purses. Not everyone understands my obsession. Okay. I got a Birkin for my birthday and it fucking caused a war in the comment section because I don't know, some people left some snarky comments of like, oh my God, why would you want a bag that costs that much? And it's like, yo, everyone has their world. Okay. My world is handbags. Your your world could be lawnmowers or tractors or houses or I don't know, something else. Okay. Your world can be anything. It could be collectibles of some sort. It can be Pokemon cards. I don't care what it is. My world is handbags. All right. So I use them a lot in my vision boards. I'm pretty sure my last one was a black Chanel bag that I was manifesting or two vision boards ago. My last one was my white G-Wagon that I already manifested. So I slapped that on because these are like big time things for me. I remember the days that I dreamed about a Chanel bag. I couldn't even fathom having a Chanel bag. My best friend got one and I was so jealous for her 16th birthday. You have no idea how jealous I was. I was a salty ass bitch. Okay. I pretended I hated that bag. That's how salty I was. Um, This is before I discovered law of attraction, by the way. And uh, this current vision board that I made just a couple weeks ago, I actually didn't put anything that I've already manifested, but I put something that I had a feeling I would get for my birthday, which I did. (laughs) The uh, beige Birkin, the Birkin 30 that I got. So for example, now my vision board that I have right now has this Birkin on it. So it's like, holy shit, it manifested. And now this is why this is important. Okay, you ready? Putting something on your vision board that's already manifested for you before, at least one thing, trains your subconscious mind to see your vision board as something that is rooted in actual reality. So if this already manifested, then of course, all of the rest of this is also going to manifest too. Because you have tangible evidence that you've already manifested this thing, then why wouldn't you manifest all of the rest of these other things? Okay? It worked. I'm telling you, this is a this is a hack that I shouldn't be giving away for free. But here I am. <laughs> this is a hack that no one taught me. I did not learn this anywhere. I just thought of this one day many, many years ago. And as soon as I started using it, it's insane and freaky how quick your subconscious mind goes from your um, seeing your vision board from being an imagination, like imagined thing to actually real. Because remember, the mind doesn't know the difference between what's imagined and what's real. So if you make your imagination real, it's only going to make it more effective. Now, the second hack is to get personal and to choose photos with first person POV. Now, this isn't always possible. There's obviously caveats and nuance to this as there is with everything in life. But if you can, try to choose photos. Like even if you're scrolling on Pinterest, which Pinterest is just a wealth of photos for vision boards, okay? Choose photos that look like you took them on your own phone. Or as if they're from your own perspective. Like imagine your eyes saw something from the angle that feels very much like, yeah, I would see this from this angle. For example, if you're manifesting having a yacht in the Bahamas, uh, instead of taking a photo of the yacht that you really want and putting it on your vision board, like as if someone took it from another boat or from land, 
why not try taking a photo that looks from the inside of the yacht or on the deck of the yacht from like a first person POV. So it looks like you're literally standing on the yacht. And then when you use your vision board for visual practices, you can easily visualize yourself actually being on the yacht because the picture helps you accomplish that. Um, Even more powerful is if you can actually go and do it yourself. So for example, if you're manifesting a car, instead of using pictures of someone else driving the car or, um, or, uh, you know, someone else being on the inside of the car, could you actually go and test drive the car yourself and take a photo with your hands on the steering wheel? Or instead of a stock photo of an engagement ring, Like I've definitely had (laughs) engagement rings on my vision board before and got the one that I, that was on my vision board and uh, hint, hint, if you ever want, you know, a great gift guide for your partner (laughs) and you have your vision board that always available and in view, like that's something they can always look at too and be like, Hmm, okay. Manifesting, getting that for them. (laughs) So instead of having a stock photo of an engagement ring, can you go into the store can you try on the ring yourself and use that as your photo? So now it's your actual fucking hand. Imagine how powerful that is to your mind to see your actual hand. Because you remember your subconscious has like a whole map and a blueprint of your body. So it knows your body. That's how it's able to regrow cells and multiply cells and, and regenerate itself and rejuvenate itself and multiply things and whatever. Okay. It has a 3D blueprint of your, I don't know if it's 3D, but it has a blueprint, okay, of your body. And so if it sees your physical hands around something or on something, takes it to the next level. So getting personal, choosing photos with first person POV, if possible, Um, is going to take things to the next level. Now, number three, don't get stuck on the vision part of vision boards. So like I said, you could be a visual person, but also benefit from implementing auditory and kinesthetic elements. These are, there's something called um, like the VAC learning styles, V-A-K, visual auditory kinesthetic. And it's basically like your sensory receiving styles. Like how do you sense information? How do you remember information? How do you pick up on information? That can very much easily be considered in the manifestation process. And some of us are dominantly one, but a mixture of a few too. And also how we manifest things could also be different from how we learn. So my learning style, just fun facts, is very kinesthetic. I like to get my hands on shit. I like to do things. I remember by doing, if you just show me something or describe something to me, I'm like, huh? I actually have to do it. Like I have to write it down. I have to actually practice it. Um, I actually have to move my body so that I can learn it. That's why I do really well in in in-person classrooms is because I feel like I'm very much in the mix. But for manifestation, I'm actually more visual. I'm a very visual visualizer. Okay. And so knowing this information about myself and just knowing how we could be a mixture of the few, it makes it very easy, easy to integrate all these elements. Now, I think we should rebrand vision boards to be feeling boards because that's ultimately what we're cultivating and inspiring here and how we get there, how we get to the desired feelings. Like what are our desired feelings? When I'm living my dream life in one year, five years, 10 years, what are these core dominant feelings? Like how do I want it to feel? And then choosing the pictures or choosing the other elements that allow me to feel those feelings. So here's a little hack on how you can understand the type of manifestor that you are. What is your sensory receiving style or your kinesthetic or sorry, not kinesthetic, your learning style or like what type of, how do you manifest? What senses do you use to manifest? I use this hack with my students all the time. I ask them to think back to a memory. So even yesterday, let's keep this easy. What did you have for dinner last night? Bring it to mind. Okay. Do you see it? Do you hear it? Do you just know it? Do you sense it? 
notice how the information is filling your mind. Okay. The memory is there. You had dinner last night. Okay. If you don't remember dinner, that's okay. Maybe you had a couple of drinks <laughs> and struggled to remember. That's okay. Just lunch or a conversation that you had or something happened in the last week or so. Okay. For me, I see it. How do I know I had chicken last night? It's because I see it on my plate. For when I ask my students, for some people, they like hear themselves ordering chicken or they hear themselves talking about chicken or they just taste it or they um, they just know it or they just sense it like they have a feeling of chicken. I, I find this so weird to me, right? As a visual person, it's like, huh, how do you just sense that you had chicken but don't see it? It's weird, right? But vice versa, for someone who's not visual, they're like, how the fuck do you see the chicken? I don't see anything. And that's okay, all right? If you're not visual, here are some hacks that you can use. You can add to the feelings of what kind of life you desire to live by adding words and phrases that you will hear when you manifest your desire on your vision board. So I actually have words right now on my vision board because I wanted to integrate this more auditory element. But you can also have phrases like, for example, if you if you manifested this house that you have on your vision board, what would your family members say to you? Like imagine your mom calling you and and congratulating you on this new home. What would she say to you? What would what would you hear? Would it be like, "Oh my god, Catherine, you did it. Oh my god, congrats on your new home." Right? So I would write that on my vision board. Or maybe it's something you say to yourself. Like let's say my goal is to be a number 1 New York Times best-selling author. And so I would hear myself be like, oh my God, I made it to the New York Times bestselling list. I'm number one or whatever it is. And so I would just have that in a quote on my vision board so that when I look at it, I would have to repeat these phrases as my affirmations. And then what this would trigger inside of me is hearing it myself and then feeling the feelings as if it was actually said to me, right? So these are like affirmations you can add. This is something um this is something else you can do with like uh integrating the auditory elements but through writing. So you could actually write a text message. You could frame it as a variety of things. You could literally borrow your partner's phone or your mom's phone or whoever's phone and text yourself a text from their point of view congratulating you on your manifestation. Or you could write a text to someone and actually type this out so you can screenshot it and put it on your vision board. So this text message could be like something that you would actually text someone if and when you man, well, not if, why the fuck did I say if? We don't play the if game here. (laughs) When you manifest the thing. Um, Something else that you could do is you could use someone else's phone to send yourself a voicemail that, um, or maybe you can have, sorry, you can have someone else send a voicemail to your phone celebrating you and congratulating you on XYZ thing that you manifested. Or you could um, record like a voice message as if you're sending that as a text to someone you love or as a voicemail that you're leaving for someone else's phone. I don't fucking leave voicemails. So for me, it's more likely to be a voice note or a written text message. So use how you actually would do a thing. And listen to this daily. Like again, going beyond the vision board. Yes, you have your vision board. So have the pictures to give you that visual aspect to really satisfy that visual part of you. Even if you aren't visual, there is still an element that is visual, like you obviously see things right in life. And um, so have that as a supplement, as a compliment to where you play this voicemail to yourself or a voice note or read this text message or plaster the text message on your vision board, whatever it is that you want. And that will just add so much more depth to your vision board. You can also, and this is, okay, this is advanced level. This is something I personally can't do. I would probably have my editor, Hannah, do this for me because she's way more talented than me. But there are actually some softwares that exist for this. I think it's called Mind Movie. Um, If I remember correctly, I did use a service or a subscription like that before in the past. But I'm thinking even more high tech than this, okay? You could make a video, you can make a movie, you could have a movie vision board 
with musical elements. You could have the audio recording playing in the background, like the voice note that you just sent to your friend with what is currently happening in your life while you're going through like an actual visual slideshow or movie, like stringing together clips that you find on YouTube of the things that you want to manifest. Or maybe you have someone, you know, edit in actual, like maybe it's, maybe it's like, um, it looks like the background or it looks like you're on your phone just, you know, doing whatever. And you have notifications that pop up on your phone for sales that you're getting or congratulations that you're getting or whatever it is, or, you know, the realtor that you're working with, like in my situation, manifesting a house for God knows how long now. Finally, thank God we have the house. If you haven't heard the update from a couple episodes ago, we're finally moving to Scottsdale, but maybe you have like a photoshopped notification coming from the realtor saying, we have a deal, like, yay, you got the house, gonna drop off the keys in an hour or whatever it is. And it's like the more creative you can get with this, the better you are with Photoshop, the better you are with video editing. You can make some elite creative things that would help you bring your vision board to life. And this is like the level of depth that I think of. I don't go this deep because I don't need to go this deep. But if you're someone who does, like you can even pay someone to create this for you. There's there's so much that you can do with this. Um, Let's see what else. Oh, you can even infuse your vision board into your passwords. Now, I highly recommend making them very secure by maybe adding in a bunch of random digits and numbers at the end. But something that I like to do is I like to make sentences with my passwords of things that I want to manifest. Um, and especially with things that are maybe requiring or no, maybe passwords. I'm just, my security brain is on right now because on my team, we have so many things that we do with security. So I'm like, I don't know if my security team is going to approve of this message, but let's say like just accessing into your laptop every single day. Like maybe don't do this for your bank account passwords. Like maybe keep them super secure, have one password, come up with a password. But if it's something where you're trying to get into just your computer, like opening up your computer, then um, make a sentence or make or string together words that represent what you want to manifest. Because think about the amount of times that you get into your own phone or you open up your laptop to get into your laptop and it's password protected. How many times you would need to enter your password? Like imagine affirming to yourself over and over and over and over and over again of what you already have and properly stating it, of course, that would make the manifestation real through your passwords. Now, last hack, number four, is I've already talked a little bit about this, but it's getting to know your human design and using that in your vision board creator uh, creation. So specifically, what I'm talking about, which I've used for a really long time now, is figuring out if you are a specific or non-specific manifester. And you can just go to um, what website is it? I want to give you the right link. Hold on. Um, humandesignblueprint.com slash chart. I'll put that in the show notes as well, where you can get access to your human design um, and you can see where your arrow is, your top right arrow. And if it's pointing to the right, you're non-specific. And if it's pointing to the left, you are specific. Now, I could totally fuck this up because I don't have it in front of me. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's that top right arrow. And so I am a non-specific manifester. And this really helps me because I know how specific I need to be with the pictures that I'm choosing. So for example, as a non-specific manifester, I'm more so tapped into the feelings of what I want to manifest. So for me, when I'm putting things on my vision board, they're not the specific house that I'm manifesting, the specific, um, well, to a degree, right? Because obviously I know what car I want to manifest. I'm going to put the specific car on there. Um, But maybe I don't know exactly what something looks like. Like I don't know exactly what my dream relationship looks like, but I found a picture that gives me the feeling that I want to feel, then I'll put that on my vision board. Or there's like a trip that I want to take and I don't know exactly like which hotel I want to stay in or what beach I want to visit. 
but I have an idea like of, of the feeling that I want to feel. And so I type in, for example, Greece, right? And I find a picture that represents the feeling. And so I'll put that on my vision board. But for a specific manifester, it's a lot more powerful to be as specific as possible. So are you going to go on Zillow and, um, or are you going to just choose any random house for your pin- from Pinterest and put on your vision board? Or are you going to go on Zillow and choose the house that you want and put that on your vision board. So that's what's going to make the difference, right? Is it going to be the exact thing or is it going to be a representation of the vibe that you want to manifest and the feeling that you want to feel when you live in it? So that will guide you in choosing the photos for your vision board. Okay, so to summarize my four hacks, number one, always put something on your vision board that's already manifested before. Number two, Two is to get personal and choose photos with first person POV. Number three is don't get stuck on the vision part of vision boards. You can go so much more in depth and beyond it. There's so many creative things that you can do here. And I'm obviously going to give you a lot more in the actual vision board alchemy training. Um, And then get to know your human design and use that in your vision board creation. And I'll show you more on how to do that as well as integrating something called cognition in the vision board alchemy training as well. So on October 23rd, which is today, (laughs) I wrote my notes, obviously I'm pre-recording this October 23rd, but this is launching the day that we are live. So vision board alchemy is live and it's where I'm going to be creating my most in-depth training on exactly how to create the most effective vision board according to your unique manifestation style and process, which unfortunately hardly anyone teaches, to be honest, and it really should be taught this way, which you can find the Vision Board Alchemy training by DMing me the word vision on Instagram at Manifestation Babe. You can go to the show notes or you can head over to manifestationbabe.com slash vision board to enroll into my training right now. And not only are you going to get the step-by-step training on how to build, uh, how to best build your vision board, but you're also going to get my step-by-step layout of my entire five-step manifestation process with actual examples of how to use it practically. This applies to money, this applies to health, this applies to love, this applies to success, like you name it. You're also going to get visualizations. One of them is a visualization to help you get clear on what you want so that creating your vision board that represents your ideal dream life takes you no time at all. You're going to get my process on how to build your vision board in a way that's in alignment with the manifestation process, that's in alignment with your subconscious mind and the spiritual laws of manifestation so that you're doing way more than just slapping together random Pinterest pictures and calling it a day. You're also going to learn techniques and hacks beyond what I shared in this podcast um, for people who aren't visual, not good at visualizing, and don't get anything out of a vision board filled with only boring ass visual pictures. And there's so many more ways to make a vision board than you can even imagine. And then a step-by-step tutorial on how to create your vision board. Um, Like actually I'm going to show you, I'm going to be screen sharing exactly how I make the digital version of a vision board for both computer, desktop, and phone background, as well as showing you more ideas on how to go beyond the traditional vision board. And then a visualization to cap it off. So there's two audios in here, two visualizations. The last one is one on how to make the vision board real. So collapsing the timeline between then and now. Again, you can sign up for this training and get it for just $55. I could charge so much more for this, but I really want it as accessible as possible. I want it in the hands of as many people as possible because I really think This is a game-changing training. You can send me a DM with the word vision on my Instagram, or you can go to manifestationbabe.com slash vision board. I will also drop that in the show notes as well. All right. With that being said, I hope to see you in the training. And if not, I will definitely catch you in the next episode. I love you so much. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, Be sure to share it with me by leaving a review on iTunes so that I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me on social media, come soak up the extra inspiration on Instagram by following at ManifestationBabe or visiting my website at ManifestationBabe.com. I love and adore you so much and can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. 
In the meantime, go out there and manifest some magic.